Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Middle Earth Monday video. Still working through the Fellowship, the original Metal Fellowship from back in the day. And this video we are going to tackle none other than Gandalf. This is one of the simpler paint schemes that is required to paint up the Fellowship as he doesn't really have a lot of detail going on with him. Big blue hat, grey robes, big bushy beard, a nice sword and a staff. It's very little detail in this particular model, so I'm gonna show you some quick techniques to get it done very fast. We are now, what, four or five models into the Fellowship, which only leaves four left. Three left, I can math me. Um, so we're getting close to the end of the first project. We have Boromir, Merry Pippin, and then the big scenic base left um, um, to finish off kind of stage one of Middle Earth Monday. So when I finish off this first series for Middle Earth Monday and the first fellowship is done, I'm very curious as to know where you guys would like me to go from here. My first idea is to go through the Pelennor Fields box set, the last edition starter set um, from Games Workshop and work through so like Theoden and, you know, the Witch King or fell beast you know all those kind of different miniatures that were in there and help you guys get those painted up or do you wish me to kind of start through the uh, the ring bears fell like journey through middle earth and just kind of paint up miniatures as i go through that series uh, i'd love to know what you think in the comments below before i get into painting gandalf i just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys for the support you have given in the last couple of weeks in regulation to uh, middle earth monday uh the numbers for each video have been growing so you guys clearly see some interest in the series and i hope that you're happy to see more and more an extra special thanks goes out to all of my active patrons without you guys i wouldn't be able to keep doing this crazy thing if you want to get involved in my patreon there's links to it below you get access to a private discord server where you can talk about your hobby on a daily basis and you get access to an extra video every single week so that's 52 extra videos a year okay guys i've wasted enough of your time in yammering let's get back and get enough and this is the beautiful Gandalf sculpt from the original Fellowship box set in metal. Uh, absolutely, it's one of my favourite Gandalfs. Not my favourite Gandalf, but one of my favourite. Remembering that there's about 11 different Gandalf sculpts, so saying I have a favourite Gandalf isn't that strange. The model was prepared in all the usual ways, sprayed black and then sprayed grey sierra's zenithal for a, a really nice base coat for contrast. Then we used Space Wolf's grey contrast and applied that over his robes. Now I know his robes are basically a deep dark brown or gray, sorry, but I decided to get um, a nice space wolf's gray base coat because it works beautifully for that kind of little tinged wool that he has. We will be shading it down and then highlighting with a darker uh, gray later on. So it won't be random blue robes, don't worry. Ultramarine's blue contrast is what I used for base coating his hat. That's right, kind of has a blue hat, in case you didn't know. I also did the little gem in the top of his staff with that same color as well. Golem and Flesh was very quickly applied to the minuscule amount of skin on show, which is just a little bit of his face and lips and then his hands. Most of which are covered by his wizard robes. From here, it's Wildwood to get all of the brown parts. So this is the leather straps that go along his, the front of him and around his waist. And of course, a base coat for the staff itself. These are very quick and easy steps. Anyone can follow along and get their Gandalfs painted. I always wondered when I finally came back to doing my Lord of the Rings collection, getting them painted, would I do just a batch paint job and paint all my Gandalfs in one go? But I guess that has been answered now with my series. Black Templar was used on a very tiny piece. There's a bit of his handle of his sword showing from the back. And that is actually a black handle. So we're just going to throw a little bit of uh, black contrast in behind there. Just to darken it down. From here it's on to Lead Belcher. And that's just for the rest of the sword. And you can get a little bit of his buckle on his belt at the front. But the majority of it is for his sword, which is hilt, pommel, and blade is silver. Not a lot of gold on his sword. I like starting with darker uh, metallic tones. Um, it's easier to layer them up down the road. From here, then we're going to throw Agrax Earthshade down across the entire miniature to add a really nice bit of shading. I basically took it straight out of the pot for the majority of the model, but I added a touch of water to the brush when I was going over the beard because I didn't want to darken it down too much. It's another tip you can do for specific parts. You can be using the same color 
um, shade across the entire miniature but by adding and taking away little bits of water you can darken and lighten some parts of it and um, just kind of a preference thing i seen how dark it was making the robes which was perfect for what i wanted but i didn't want it to go that dark for his beard so this was me mixing a little bit of water Okay, with all of the model dried, I just blacked out the base and then it was time to start layering. So we started with Mechanicus Standard Grey. And I'm just going to do a one stage highlight across all the different bits and pieces for Gandalf. And obviously he's wearing so many robes that it's actually quite a delight to layer up. Because we're just going to go for those nice you know, high parts of the folds. And leave all the uh, creases and deep shadow parts alone. Like I said, if you just follow the brush in that correct direction, following those uh, folds, it's a very easy job to uh, highlight it um, quite effectively. Um, quite a simple job, but it, it doesn't treat. Here we're going to go over to Thunderhawk Blue, and that's the color we're going to use to highlight his hat. I didn't want to go for a bright blue. It's not a, it's not a strikingly blue hat. In fact, when I said he had a blue hat, I bet you, you went back and had a look to see if he actually does have a blue hat. He does, trust me. Um, it is just quite subtle. So the this color blue works a treat for highlighting it up. And see, I'm taking my time. I'm not going for this like really bold, solid coat. It's just a bit of light highlighting. It doesn't have to be completely opaque. It's fabric material, remember, not armor panels or plates. Administratum Grey was then brought in to highlight his beard very quickly, just following a couple of strands down. Just to really push it more towards that kind of whitey grey stage. He is a very old man, thousands of years old. hasn't quite transferred himself to Gandalf the White just yet so he does have his, his great big grey beard as you can see I am not going crazy I'm not trying to slather on a big thick coat and get it in all the recesses I just want to basically highlight the hair with this color so all the like most predominant strands I'm going to give that color to from there, we're going to go over to Mornfang and highlight all of the uh, bits we did well with. So very lightly around his belt and straps around his waist and chest. And then, of course, we're going to go and do a little bit of highlighting to his wizard's staff. Just like before, I'm not trying to get this solid block of Mornfang brown across it. I'm just going very lightly, catching some of the more raised areas. Or dragging my brush across the length of it, kind of like wood grain, if you know what I mean. From here, we go to Cadian Flesh Tone and add a very tiny uh, bit of highlighting to his face. There is really not a lot of face showing. It's not the easiest thing to layer up, but just a little bit across the cheekbones and his nose really will make a difference. And his lips as well, peeking through his beard. And then, of course, his hands. Onto Ironbreaker then to uh, make his beautiful sword pop. You can see we're just going down the length of the blade, keeping that middle section nice and dark. And then if you touch highlight around the uh, pommel and cross guard as well. As you can see, painting up Lord of the Rings miniatures is not difficult. I'm with a bunch of us, I'm sure, have these collections lying around in a shoebox somewhere. And I think it's time we break them out and get a little bit of painting done and play this epic game system. I cannot stress enough how amazing the game system is. And with Gandalf painted minus his base, he gets added into the scene. And as you can see, if I do my math correctly, there is six finished and three left to go. So we are nearly finished this first product. So four more videos. Sorry, three more videos, Merry and Pippin, Boromir, and then the base itself. Some quick, nice shots. We'll round out this video nicely. And there we have it, guys. Gandalf is painted up and ready for his scenic base. Like I've said in previous videos, I'm going to be doing all of the bases on these miniatures at the same time at the end with the scenic piece itself. So they all blend in perfectly and it makes one cohesive scene. 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as uh, the algorithm shows me that about 60% of the people that watch my video are not subscribed. So what are you doing? Wasting my time here. Come on, hit that button. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll go back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next video.